Flocking is a process where you stick. Hi, I'm Andy from the Andy of Astro YouTube channel. It can be a huge improvement to the sh Andy here from the Andy of Astro YouTube channel. Hello, greetings, welcome. <laughs> is the second ohm mirror from a 130 PDS. A little bit dusty, but that's okay, I can clean that. What I'm planning on doing is see all this shiny stuff around the edge. That's obviously from where they did the aluminium coating. So I am going to paint all of this matte black. And I'm also going to paint around here matte black as well. Now you can use blackboard paint. I'm just using a Humbrol enamel. Now you've got to mix these really well because all of the stuff that actually makes it matte is quite gloopy and stuck in the bottom. So you need to give it a good mix for at least sort of three to five minutes. Okay, so that's the secondary mirror now painted, leaving that to dry. And there's the focus, so it's already almost all dry. But I will leave this for a few hours for the paint to set properly before I put it all back together again. Ten things to make your Newtonian telescope work. Number one, stop light leaks. Your primary mirror will have light leaks all the way around it, and so will the focuser, particularly around where the camera attaches and at the base of the focuser. Wrap these in felt, create a felt wrap to go around the base of the telescope, and also put tape around the base of the focuser. Number two, make sure nothing moves, in particular your mirrors. You will lose collimation if your mirrors are loose. Check that the primary mirror is not loose and check that the spider supporting the secondary mirror is tight and can't move at all during a night's imaging. Number three, fit some really easy to use collimation screws like bobs knobs or if you can measure the thread, find some knurled thumb screws to go on the secondary mirror. They make such a difference when you're collimating and it makes the job so much easier. Number four, paint the mirrors. The mirror edges are often silvered from the aluminium silvering process when they made the mirrors. If you're able to paint the edges and the rear, you're able to reduce the amount of light that's bouncing around inside the telescope. Number five, paint the focusing tube. You'd be amazed at the impact that focusing tube has. And you could go really extreme with this and actually trim the focusing tube. I've not done this. I don't want to cut into my lovely telescope, but if you're really confident and you know what you're doing, you could cut the focusing tube so that it doesn't intrude into the light path on your Newtonian telescope. I have all of the bits now to build the new spider, the secondary mirror, which has been kept safe in there, and a few of the nuts and bolts, which are all there. This is the old spider. 
which um, I'm replacing. And this is the new 3D printed one, which I've painted with matte black paint so that it doesn't have any reflections. So I'm going to assemble this now. I'm also going to put a steel washer between the mirror and the spider because this is what looks to be aluminium and I think that will make it a little bit more stable when it comes to collimation. Okay, that's the new secondary mirror setup. I don't know the orientation of the mirror yet, so I will have to get the telescope now and then set up the Ocal collimator so that I can collimate the scope and get it absolutely spot on. On this 3D print, you can see that there is a little cutout just here, and that has to line up with the join in the tube, which is just there. And you can see if I line that up, the mirror is actually pointing in the wrong direction, so I'm going to tweak that now. Number six, fit dew shields and also dew heaters. You'd be amazed at how dew can impact the performance of your telescope. And fitting a simple dew shield, it could be made of cardboard as long as it's painted matte black on the inside, but it will make a big difference to the amount of dew that builds up on your Newtonian telescope. Replace the spider. I know this is quite extreme to replace the spider supporting the secondary mirror, but if you're able to find a 3D printed model of the spider, like I did for the 130 PDS, you're able to improve the stability of the secondary mirror and it will hold collimation so much better. There are also some available which are made from a solid piece of metal and those are incredibly stable and able to hold collimation really well. Number eight, flock the inside of your telescope tube. Flocking is a process where you stick non-reflective matte black material inside the telescope tube to prevent any light reflecting when you're taking images. It can have a massive improvement to the performance of the telescope and also improve the contrast in your images. Number nine, fit an aperture mask. An aperture mask on the primary mirror can help to remove the mirror clips from influencing the shape of stars. It can be a huge improvement to the shape of the diffraction spikes on the stars, but beware, it also reduces the size of the primary mirror and therefore slightly reduces the light gathering capability of your primary mirror in your telescope. And number 10, the most important thing with any Newtonian telescope is collimation. Collimation is so important. Everything depends on collimation. It is imperative that you check your collimation, not just with a laser collimator or a Cheshire collimator or a device like an Ocal collimator. You must check your collimation with the shape of the stars when your camera is in position because that's the only true test of how well your telescope is collimated. And of course, if you've managed to achieve all of those, then you're amazing because I've not managed to achieve all of those. And it's incredibly difficult to get your Newtonian telescope to tick all 10 of those boxes really well. I think it's baby steps to slowly address each and every one of those until your telescope performs to absolute peak perfection. Wow, that looks amazing. So here's the 3D printed spider now in place. It's been painted matte black. I'll now be able to collimate the scope. These little nuts which I made here, I'll just put some matte black paint over those as well, just to stop anything from reflecting. I'm really pleased with that. It's quite a lot firmer than the old spider, and I'm hoping that the plastic should hold up, particularly with the collimation, because it's, the thread is obviously in the plastic from the 3D printing. 
but it seems to work really My well. My Skywatcher 200 PDS went away to the supplier and they were kind enough to replace it with a brand new one. So I've got a brand new 200 PDS and I'm now going to go through and try and address some of the things that I know will need addressing with this telescope. just set up with the Oakle collimator and let's have a look how the scope was supplied in terms of collimation. You can see it's pretty far away from being collimated which is kind of what you'd expect with a scope that's been in transit. I've used the offset slightly on the Ocal in order to get this green circle in line with the actual focus tube. And then I put the red circle here on and the crosshairs and you can see how far out the secondary mirror is and we need to adjust that now, make it right. A teeny tiny favour to ask, if at all you enjoy these videos, I would really appreciate it if you could give them a like and also if you like this type of content, please subscribe please. It makes such a difference to the channel and also it helps bring the videos to other people who might be interested in this type of content. So thanks very much for watching and let's go back to the video. You can see that just at the bottom here the secondary mirror goes below the circle and at the top it goes below the circle. Now everything else is pretty much lined up, it's not there. This adjustment now is actually on the spider. So I have to move the mirror physically up slightly using the spider. So I'll do that now. Okay, I tightened that one and I loosened the one underneath, which had the effect of moving the mirror upwards. And we can see now that the mirror is pretty much correct there and correct there but it's slightly too low and slightly too low there. So now I need to adjust the centre screw to bring the mirror that way slightly. So I need to just loosen these slightly and then tighten this screw here. So I've now got the primary mirror lined up here, the secondary mirror lined up just here and the focus are lined up there so it's better than it was. I still can't get this edge and this edge but I think those are the edges of the mirror. You can see this little bit on just under there as well. It's really tricky. Now the next test, although you can see that I'm very close there, I am going to turn the telescope over and see if the primary mirror moves. So I'm not going to change anything here at all, I'm literally just going to rotate the telescope and see if the primary mirror moves. Because if it does move, I know that the primary mirror is loose. And that's as far as I've got. I haven't been able to do any imaging because there's very little darkness. In fact, there's no astronomical darkness at all for another couple of months, I think. But I've got lots of stuff that I hope will be interesting to you over the next few weeks.